Hello viewers, welcome to this video. This video is slightly off topic again and this time uh, I was interested in showing you what sort of softwares that I use on my uh, Linux distribution on my Linux computer. So basically I've compiled a list of softwares over time. So these are the softwares that I can't live without. So any, any distribution that I install, anything that I do, I just make sure that I get these softwares installed um, uh, as the first step. So, um, you know, basically starting with the essential thing, you just need, I basically, I just need um, a, a browser and a terminal to start with. So those are the two essential things. Um, other, other, other things are mandatory, but the two most essential things to me are uh, a browser and a terminal. So basically, whatever distribution i use uh, i tend to change distribution probably you might have seen my distro hopper video um, so i i tend to change my uh, distribution every now and then um, from fedora ubuntu gentoo arch linux and so on and i keep my data partition separate all my files uh, documents pictures movies uh, audio files everything in a separate data partition but i keep changing the operating system i sometimes dual boot and so on but whatever operating system i choose whatever linux distribution i choose these are the um, softwares that i uh, install in the first place so basically starting with uh, the browser the browser that i use is cute browser so which is here cute browser i don't use google chrome uh, or firefox or opera or anything so it's just uh, this one cute browser very minimalistic so it makes my life a lot productive, so I can't definitely live without Qt Bro Browser. It's a Python-based PyQt web engine uh, browser, keyboard-driven web browser, lots of custom shortcuts that you can define and so on. So that makes my life a lot easier. So Qt Browser plus one. And uh, uh, in terms of terminal, depending on the distribution that I'm in, if I'm in a full-blown distribution like Fedora, Ubuntu, or um, anything Manjaro, uh, then I would go with GNOME Terminal um, because I go with the GNOME desktop environment. But if I go with some minimalistic uh, operating system like Gen 2, uh, Arch Linux, where I don't normally install um, a desktop manager, I only install a window manager like i3. So in those situations, I use Termite, which is again a lightweight uh, terminal emulator. So whatever uh, terminal emulator I use, so the shell that I will be using is Z shell. And on top of Z shell, I install oh my Z shell. And then I use ZSH auto suggestions for the auto suggestions. So if you've noticed in all my videos, so if I just type something, you will see something in the background. So if I do some commands, basically it's suggesting some commands from my uh, ZSH history. Based on the history, you can see that uh, the, the last command I did with the uh, the git that starts with git is git clone my vagrant github repository and if I just hit the right arrow key it auto completes the uh, the command in the history so that's provided by the zsh auto suggestions plugin and the power level 10k font power level 10k is the the prompt customization so if I go into my um, say for example if I go into a a github repository and it shows me uh, which branch i'm in and what's the status of the uh, the branch whether i'm behind the master or uh, ahead of uh, the master or so on so some details about it and it also shows me um, some stats about say for example if i do aws or if i do uh, kubectl and so on it will give me some context sensitive information in the prompt so basically uh, customizing prompt prompt customization is achieved through this uh, tool power level 10k so that's that uh, in terms of multimedia what I usually have is these two uh, tools here MPV and M player that's it nothing else so no VLC no SM player or uh, no fancy uh, GUI players for audio or video for everything I use MPV and M player even this one here, this uh, self view of me here is uh, as an M player script. Uh, it's an M player command that uh, shows the webcam. Okay, so MP, MPV and M player and YouTube deal and MPS YouTube. Okay, so 
I definitely definitely can't live without this tool here MPS YouTube basically MPS YouTube uh, you can browse and you can uh, use a terminal it's a terminal based uh, tool where you can uh, search for YouTube videos and play YouTube videos basically using uh, MPV or M player so you can set whatever uh, uh, client you want to use to watch videos or play audio files so I've chosen MPV or sometimes I choose M player so MPS YouTube uh, it also uses YouTube deal uh, as a dependency it pulls in as a dependency and then I use simple screen recorder for recording my uh, YouTube video so it's on my other monitor here so simple screen recorder and I use PTV for video editing once I record my video I use PTV to uh, edit my videos and render it okay so I'll do a separate video on how I uh, record and how I uh, edit my videos in PTV I don't do a uh, I'm not a big uh, expert in editing videos. I just focus on the content, but not on the editing. But I will show you what what sort of settings that I use while I'm rendering uh, to YouTube and so on. So that's PTV and Simple Screen Recorder. So I can quickly show you uh, MPS YouTube. Okay, so I've got a shortcut assigned to launch MPS YouTube. So basically, that's MPS YouTube, and I can search for, for example, if I want to search for any uh, music for example Indian hang drum tableau music for example and it's gonna search YouTube and gonna uh, give me a list of suggestions so those are the list of uh, things and I can uh, scroll through pages or if I want to choose one of these and I can choose them so the first one here so just press one and if I press enter it's gonna uh, bring up uh, a MPV basically this one is an MPV uh, player I really like that music so whenever I work I'll just put that in the background so that's MPV you can watch YouTube videos and if I want to just watch the audio of it uh, but not the video I can do minus a for audio I tend to listen to the news uh, regularly watch uh, follow news and uh, I I usually use this MPS YouTube Hopefully you can hear that music in the background. So that's without the video. So basically I use this one, MPS YouTube, all day. It will be running in the background throughout my day. Okay, so that's about multimedia. And when it comes to development tools, what I use. So obviously this bit is very important for me, containerization and virtualization. Obviously Docker, Docker Compose, uh, LXC, LXD, Vagrant, VirtualBox, and QMU KVM libvirt Word manager I tend to use uh, QMU KVM a lot than VirtualBox but when I'm doing video because most people they don't use KVM or QMU uh, libvirt Word manager stack so they just use VirtualBox so uh, because of uh, compatibility it's cross-platform VirtualBox so I tend to do my videos based on VirtualBox but I personally use uh, kernel based virtualization in Linux and obviously LXC and LXT so that's a very important stack for me I will make sure it's always installed on any systems that I go and then uh, other CLI tools that I use kubectl helm k3d for uh, it's a rancher based lightweight uh, k3s distribution running in docker containers so that's k3d kind is again kubernetes in docker you might have seen my videos about kind I have AWS CLI, Google Cloud SDK, obviously Git, and I use a tool called R-Clone, which is a cloud storage uh, sync tool. So you can uh, hook up to any of the cloud storage like Google Drive, uh, Dropbox, Amazon S3, Microsoft OneDrive. So you can set up two-way sync. You can upload, you can download, or you can uh, create a local directory and then sync it with the cloud and so on. So I use that every day. Okay, so database tools. I don't use this personally, but uh, for work uh, purpose, I use all these things. So Mongo tools like Mongo shell, Mongo import, export, Mongo dump, Mongo restore, those kind of tools. Similarly for MySQL, MariaDB and Postgres. So when it comes to GUI, graphical user interface, uh, the database tools, uh, softwares that I use are DBWare Community Edition. I don't use MySQL Workbench uh, because I can connect to different types of databases using dbweaver and uh, NoSQL booster for MongoDB 
the dbweaver community edition doesn't support uh, connecting to the mongodb databases so i have nosql booster i also have atlas mongodb compass uh, to connect to the uh, uh, mongodb databases so that's my dev tools and when it comes to communication instant messaging and communications i use microsoft teams for work purpose slack again for work purpose and then i use discord with my friends rechat irc i don't use a graphical client i used to use hex chat line chat and so on um, but i prefer using a terminal based irc client so i use wechat and depending on the distribution that i'm in whether in a fully blown graphical distribution or a very minimal i3 distribution i3 tiling window manager i tend to use either thunderbird or a terminal based neomut for my uh, email client as my email client so when I use Neoman, I use iSync and MB Sync to sync my uh, Gmail inbox, and I use MSMTP to send messages to as an SMTP uh, relay. Okay, so that's about all the tools that I use. And one thing that I make sure that I always installed in any machines that I go is Bellina Etcher, which is a USB imaging uh, tool. You can flash ISO images to your USB. As you know, as you might have guessed by now. I need this tool because I do distro hop every now and then so I need to have uh, this one installed because I've got loads of ISOs just format it and then uh, burn it install it and so on but recently one of my viewers one of my subscribers uh, suggested a different tool which I'm which I haven't actually tried but I'm very interested in trying that which is called uh, Ventoy okay let's search for Ventoy a new tool so that's the one again it's uh, similar I, I've used unit boot in I've used uh, Fedora live USB creator uh, Rofus and other softwares uh, but I personally like a uh, Bellina etcher very much uh, it's an electron based app so this one here is the one that's suggested by one of my viewer Ventoy the cool thing about this is you can actually load multiple ISOs into your USB and then you can boot it uh, from one of those distributions, one of those ISO files instead of, you know, my current my current process is you just, uh, I'll just burn an ISO file into an USB and uh, next time when I have to install a different operating system, I have to format it and I have to uh, re-burn uh, the image with a different ISO file. But using this tool, you can load multiple ISO files, which is exactly what I wanted. So I might give this a try a little later. If you haven't tried it, please give this a try. Okay, so that's about the software stack. So I don't tend to use a lot of softwares, but the ones that I use are very minimal and the ones that I really want to be on all my systems. Okay, cool. So um, I would be interested in knowing what are your uh, favorite tools that you use on a daily basis and so on. If you'd like to share, you can comment it and I'll be happy to read through your comments. And uh, I think that's it for this video. I will see you all in my next video. Bye-bye.